Welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to share the importance of self-love and the importance of love. Love and compassion and joy. Because I feel like everyone, everyone, literally everyone, goes through this period of time and is struggling with their self-worth or self-value or to be able to take time and take space for yourself. To prioritize yourself, prioritize your health, prioritize your mental and the physical health and the wealth. And I think especially if you're a goal-oriented person, you tend to be hard on yourself. You tend to give yourself a lot of hard times because you have this vision, because you want to accomplish X, Y, Z. And then that actually backfires and it makes you feel like shit, basically. And I have the same tendency. I'm very hard on myself. And I think that actually helped me to get where I am now. But also, I consciously choose to to take myself to a trip of the self-love and compassion journey as well on time to time because most of the time I'm very disciplined and I'm, you know, focused. So I also allow myself to be in tune with my feminine energy to receive and to surrender. But the reason why I prioritize self-love is because if you cannot love yourself, if you cannot help yourself, you cannot share anything. You cannot share happiness. You cannot share the love. Because... Essentially, if you don't have it, you cannot share. Then what's happening is that the people who's people giver, people who's very kind to others, are sacrificing some certain aspect of yourself and to give or to to share because you don't have it, so you're not sharing, but you're giving by sacrificing yourself. There is actually a show uh, for for children called Ampaman. <laughs> no, I'm just going to insert the photo right there. He's basically a bread. The bread with red beans inside. So it's, and this bread is basically a very popular bread in Japan, and a lot of uh, children likes it. And this superhero, Ampa Man, basically have opponents, Baiki Man, it's a virus. And, you know, he goes fighting and he tried to save people from uh, th this Baiki Man. But when he wants to help somebody who's, in, who's tired, exhausted, or in pain, he basically sacrifices himself and then give it to him. He takes a part of his head and then give it to people that he wants to help. And what happens is he sacrificed himself to give the power and energy to these people. And imagine that you have to give sacrifice yourself to people and just keep doing that. You're going to end up not having your face. But funny enough, in this show, there's, a, there's another guy who's called a Jam Odisa. Basically, he's the uncle. He's the creator of the Ampanman. So he cooks you know, he bakes the, the, the bread, he bakes his face, and then he throws that <laughs> to Anfanman, and then it's like, like it switches. And then you know, every time that he gets a new face, he's like, da -da -da. it's like, Anfanman, let's get it. So it's such a funny show, but it really shows that how, this, how the love and how self-love works. Because if you keep sacrificing your face, and obviously you don't have energy, you don't have power to fight you don't have nothing left and unfortunately you don't have the uncle who can just throw a new face to you it's 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 gone that's why a lot of people are depressed and a lot of people are just struggling with anxiety and everything because that once you reach the negative cycle it's just the only thing left inside of you is a negative cycle but your behavior still remain as a pattern because it's a now your system, you program yourself to behave a certain way, say yes all the time, to sacrifice yourself and then normalize that. You're normalizing that as a default setting to operate as a who you are. And you just keep sacrificing, keep sacrificing. At some point, you're in a minus and then all you all you left is the, the feeling of negativity and just some random negative thought that lets you just like keep choking you in a 24 seven. So that's why the self-love comes fast because you have to help yourself fast. And then if you are happy and if you are in a positive mood and if you are just genuinely feeling great, then you want to help others. You want to share things without actually sacrificing it because now you have something that you can share. If you have a bunch of face, like an Ampama, just, you know, then you can share that faces, right? You can just like give, like give everyone, but you still have a bunch of face left and it doesn't bother you because you have it. And I think a lot of people who have high standards tend to be this way. Because people who want to help others or people who 
have the kindness or capacity to give a lot, basically they are more kinder than others. They are more in tune with the humanity rather than people who just don't give a shit about others and trying to take everything from it. So because they have the hurt, because they, they are kind soul, that's why they're chosen to be on that path. Because I, I can tell you that all the healers out there, all the spiritual healers, shermans, and then the people who goes on the stage or people who go out there on Instagram and then YouTube and then trying to spread the love and the positivity and helping others is definitely have been through some certain traumas and some certain level of like depression or the hardships. And that's why they want to be the one that who shares and help others like a passing baton. And then that's how the generation works, right? Thousands and thousands of years ago from from the um from the ancient human history that people has been just passing the baton, understanding the pain, going through the pain and everybody is just experiencing certain things and passing the baton and passing the wisdom to to keep the bridge alive so that everyone can become the bridge of the generation to generations and people to people. But in order for you to be the inspiration, in order for you to be the bridge, in order for you to be able to give happily and also be fulfilled by it, it's necessary for you to love yourself fast. And then it's easy to be said than done, for sure. Because you are struggling to love yourself, perhaps, and you're struggling to accept who you are, how you look, and then who you are as a person, individual, maybe the things that you haven't been doing, or your character, or maybe your laziness. Everything including that is you. But the good news is, you can change most of your aspect. Because who you are is just the condition, the combination of your social condition and things that you've learned from your parents and things that you experienced in the past. The manifestation, all the combination. So essentially, if you are going to experience the different things and if you actually program yourself differently and reprogram your mind and to teach yourself a different thing and different belief, then essentially 10 years later, you can be a completely different person. And biologically, Within the ear, you're a different person because all each cell will die and then reborn and it die and reborn. And so you're going to be a completely different person. So from that perspective, you don't have to keep being you and you don't have to definitely identify yourself as a current condition of who you are in terms of like the, how you think and how what you believe and then your financial state or the friendship and the environment or where you live. It's just the, the middle of the process because life is essentially in the middle of the immense complexity. It's always in the process of something. It's always in the process of the journey. Sure, as a story, you might have a bunch of chapters. But again, one chapter ends and then one begins. So if somebody doesn't end the chapter, they're stuck in one chapter. And then that one single chapter dominates the whole story, even though we are allowed to change the chapter and then get on to a completely different new chapter and how we can actually love ourselves and accept ourselves as who we are it's really the allowance it's really the allowance it's very simple the compassion and allowance and love and this three triangle we really have to take a look and understand that's all we need that's all we need the things that we built is the things the goals and accomplishment and everything will fade away but all it's left is the fulfillment, right? All it's left is that the love and compassion is something that we cannot express, something that we don't have to have, like a target or, or object or subject to, to be proud of. Being proud is definitely very important. And then actually it is going to be your part of the motivation and it's going to be the part of the fuel for you to actually take action to accomplish goals and to be able to free yourself from all these toxic people and negative shit narcissistic people around you but at the end of the day if the all you care is being proud or to perceived as a proud person or somebody being proud of you all you're going to be left is just the vanity and to be honest you're going to die in a void as the number three is a magic number and Nikola Tesla's uh, the theory is 369, I believe that triangle means something. Now, I believe this triangle of love and compassion and allowance is what we actually need and in that it's going to stay alive even after our death. 
because everything will fade away. We cannot bring anything. And then even though we cannot own anything, if you bought the house, if you bought a car, if you bought this and that, well, your government can take away anytime you, anytime they want if they don't like you, right? So that means that why do we have to pay taxes for things that we own? It's it's insane, isn't it? Right? Like you have to pay tax for the, the house that you have every year. If, they, if you don't pay the tax, then they'll take that away. That means that you don't own it. It's insane. So we basically, we cannot bring anything to, to the another life, to the after death experience. We can't. So it's basically we are consuming this in a lifetime and perhaps you can bring it to your next generation, next generation, your son and your grandson, your granddaughter or the next, uh, your family member. But it's just at the end of the day, what you want to feel is just a love. And I think a lot of people postpone that. A lot of people postpone and realize that in their late life that or they all were cared was this and that. And now you feel like it's too late and now you feel like, mm, I don't know what to do. But it's never too late if you actually take an action right now because again, who you are, the idea of and self-concept of who you are is essentially just who you have been the last 10 years, 20 years, or since you were born. But you made a significant changes in your turning point in your life many times. And it's, same, it's, the, it's the same. But you shouldn't even identify yourself as who you are now, but more looking into who you want to be. Because you, who you want to be in your mind is essentially who you truly are. It's just how you show up in your life because of the, the eyes in the public, because you care and you're afraid of the judgment and criticism. It sabotages you to, to essentially shrink into the who you are in this current reality. But who you want to be is who you truly are. And then you resonate with that. And in order to do that, you got to love yourself. you got to accept yourself and you got to have more compassion to yourself. And the, the key is really allowing allowing yourself to just bathe in this love and joy and then you know it's funny because i used to hate these people i used to hate these people who's just like always in love and always in joyful moment the joyful vibe and i'm like the fuck you know what the fuck but i realized that the reason why i had this negative feeling towards these people was because i couldn't do it and it was kind of like out of jealousy or some sort of judgment that actually teaching me that, hey, you actually need this. So I started to really let go and surrender by tuning into my feminine energy and then just let go and allow myself to be the shitty version of herself sometime or to be weak sometime, but still not losing that sense of connection within myself just because one day you're dead tired and exhausted. But for example, today, you know, I show up with my just fucking pyjama and I still am shooting YouTube. That's the part of me want to be proud of myself because I know that I can build something, that I know that I can accomplish my goals. But at the same time, just because I'm tuning into my masculine energy and then like, accomplishing a lot of tasks and being disciplined and stay dedicated and stay true to myself, I also allow myself to be in a human of feminine energy. And that is really source of the self-love and that was, you know, the, the, the love, the unconditional love and the divinity, it all comes from a woman. So it's really balancing out and harmonizing your yourself and allowing yourself. And then really the key is allowing yourself. I don't, I don't think there is another word to it. There is another way to to reach that level of like vibration frequency feeling love and feeling compassionate and feeling joyful it's just you gotta love yourself but also you can practice meditation and meditation has been the key for me the way i you know tap into the enlightenment and the way i tap into this amazing forgiving state of mind it was all about meditation and then i practiced the gratitude i practiced compassion and practice forgiveness and it was all meditation so if you want to do something with it, then strictly meditate and practice a lot of gratitude, practice a lot of compassion, practice a lot of self-love. Because practice makes it perfect, right? In any sports we practice, in any study we practice. So meditation is definitely one of the, that's why I keep telling everybody to meditate. That's why, you know, my sing symbol of who I am is meditation. 
And I believe in that. And then it is ancient practice that has been helping people, right? And it's beyond just reducing your anxiety. It's, it's, it's the only way to really be in alignment with yourself and tap into this love and um, happiness and joy. So with that said, I want you to today, after we're watching this video, I want you to just take time and allow yourself to be in that state of mind. Like just simply be, allow yourself to, to accept and to be more compassionate to be who you are. You don't have to have money in your bank account. You don't have to be this amazing version of yourself. You don't have to be shredded. You just allow yourself to be who you are and accepting where you are and who you are because that's a start. That's not the end of the journey. This is actually a beginning of the new chapter. But once you're beginning with a new chapter, the all the fucking shit chapter ends. But you have to end the chapter in order to begin the new chapter. So really, just tap into that. Just be, just allow yourself. All right, that's the practice. And every day, use my guided meditation and then start meditating every single day. All right, with the said, love yourself. I'll see you tomorrow. Live your life like a movie.